Let's see if people uh hey everybody. Um, see if people show up. Yeah. Give it a minute or two. Because I should full screen this thing. I guess they'll be yeah, watching us eat pizza for posterity. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna be sharing your screen? Yeah, yeah, Oh. Should I be connecting this then? Uh no, just do the hangouts. Just do the Yeah. Uh oh. Let's try this this be the first food I've eaten in a day and a half. <laughs> so, other than coffee and cough drops. And yogurt. Oh, darn it. I must forget I have to I'm a Firefox person, so yeah, they go to Firefox. Chrome. Thanks, Google. Hey, no, no, oh my Google. Hey, thanks, Google. The new Firefox is a lot better than the yeah. old one. Is it have that memory bulk that happens over time? I haven't seen that. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess like when you leave your browser hanging around for a while, then it slowly just creeps up and eats memory, then it's, everything slows down. I do close my browser a lot. Just got one of the hot ones. Ooh. It's really good until then. <laughs> that hit. Yeah. And you have a combination too, so Dorito plus the jalapeno. I like the Dorito. I like the Dorito sizes yeah. though a little bit. Yeah, that, maybe this is good. This is good. Yeah. I've taken some pills. I've got a short supply of cough drops with me. So. Google Hangout. Oh, folks are missing out on this wonderful pizza. <laughs> oh, ready to join the video call. There we go. Daniel Doss was like a shitty character. Oh well. <laughs> Next step, uh, oh, no. oh, no. oh no. Yeah, mute, mute your microphone. Okay. And mute your speaker. Nice. Oh, actually, you might be able to leave the microphone off. Uh, should I try it? Microphone on? Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Come on now. Um, I'll click your name. How do I get the screen again? Uh, I'll present to everybody. Trying to share screen? Yeah. It's either a green thing on the far left or it's uh, there are little three dots on the top right. Uh, okay. okay. Hide this. Yeah. Here we go. Uh -huh. I guess. I also have an external hard drive, but I couldn't figure out how to make it record to there. It's like 12 terabytes or something. So it's like record a zillion P for days. I don't know how to make it good. <laughs> So, oh, there we go. part three. So we last stopped at page forty-seven. Now, brief review of the first two parts. Oh, I don't know if you know, but there's like a uh, up in your top right. You might want to turn off alerts. Uh, yeah, over top right. Unless you're just sharing that window. Okay, that's what I do. Uh, in your very top right. Uh -huh. See that little hamburger? Yep. Click on that. Uh, what did it do? It do it again. There you go. Scroll up. Like swipe, swipe like three finger swipe down. Why is it not doing the other way? There you go. Do not disturb. Oh, crap. Not that much. <laughs> Do not disturb it. Go back to that. Do not disturb. And you'll get random things. Ah, gotcha. You won't get 
hey, you've been approved for your mortgage, or hey, you've been rejected for your mortgage. We'll see how many days you've been waiting on your updates. Yeah. So, I guess, do a quick preview, I guess, of what we did pass. So, we talked before about the initial preface of LISP. Um, you went through the whole, uh, so the first few pages are the basics about S expressions and as well as the deprecated uh, M expressions. Which were interesting. Mm. And really, McCarthy wanted that until the mid-70s when we kind of gave up. Was a prologue not a representation of M expressions? No. You wanted about basically all golf, I remember right, or was the kind of thing? You like on the yeah, you want to you want to make it look like algal so that yeah, I guess would capture all the other people remember the type, I guess. <laughs> now that'd be cool. I wish to write all them. <laughs> Actually, make it happen. Why not? Notions of partial functions were there very very early. Um, the propositional statements and predicates, additional expressions, recursive definitions. And we always had the uh, the greater than the GCD example, the square root example. I guess we're there from the very, very beginning. So from SICP, and also here too. Might be coincidence. <laughs> Might be, yeah. 1960, I mean, the 80s are like the modern times, right? Compared <laughs> to this thing. Um, yeah, that notation. We should, we should probably, we should all be dressed like mods. <laughs> Symbolic expressions. So I guess they had the uh, dot notation too. So I guess what we have in, I guess in regular list today, we'll have the period. lowercase period. Yeah. So it was back then it was the dot. So um, they got actually centered, which is kind of cool. I wonder if the keyboard did it or they just formatted it that way. So the notions of cars and cons, the atom, basic uh, equal to car, Cutter cons. Uh, so here we go. The cars will have mnemonic significance only. We discuss representation of the system in the computer. Blah. Uh, structure of parts. Um, keep on going forward. The uh, substitution function. I guess we talked about that before. How that was there, but not the same as what this original one was doing. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what we. Poked around in Ripple or something. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to go back to the past video for that. Uh, the equal to expression, which was just one equal to, not the multiple form of equal to's that we have in common lisp. Well, they have EQ, EQL, and equal. Do they have um, numerical equal? Oh. Uh, let's take a quick look again. Are they just not numbers? numbers for Side. Where'd it go? I think I need some uh, sugar on top of my church. <laughs> we did. I, I saw EQ fly by a moment ago. Oh, you did? Okay. Oh, there's EQ. Yeah. So, find if and only if either X or Y is atomic. They're the same symbol. True. Not they're false. So so far we're still in symbolic definition. Yes. Yeah. Um and we'll, yeah, I don't think we've seen anything numeric really yet. Compositions. Enough clothes. The uh or ratios or association list, the ASOC operator. But no proper hashes, just the association list itself. Oh, sublist was in there early. Yes. And then, so all that before was all done to M expressions, since he thought, I guess, back in the day, that M expressions will take over. Those are M expressions. Yeah, yeah. that weird. All, all these with the, the squares. Yeah, it looks a little heavy to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we're Java. Oh, and oh, we had a side note, too, of uh, how uh, the typesetting back in the day, so that Ellipse, ellipse, uh, ellipse, <laughs> and written. Yeah, because it was just typed up by 
they had a name in the front. Yeah, in the preface, she had yeah. the, we had the secretary name. Who Actually, had this up. This by hand. They didn't have photocopiers. Well, maybe they didn't. Maybe they had those weird purple things. I was a kid. Those yeah. were probably still going around. The universal apply. The carbon copy stuff with multiple yeah, pages. Yeah, the mediograph or whatever, the purple junk that smells nice. Almost impossible to read, but it smells really good. AppQ? What's AppQ? Apply yeah. some. Mm. Well, we have eval, so we have apply. Apply coded. Apply coded looks like, yeah. Yeah. And all M expressions. Evless. So it uses app Q to put quotes around each of the arguments that eval or regard them as standing for themselves. The notion of eval, two arguments, expression to be evaluated in the list of pairs. Um, yeah, I don't remember anything. Actually, that, we had that's an interesting list up there. They they seem to have the core list here, right? You get you got eval, you got, yeah. you got cond, cons, and atom, and quote. Your car, you got her. Yes. Yeah, it was interesting, like the uh, con came What's before it? the if clause itself. Yes. Because yeah. you don't need it. Yeah. No, you don't. Convenience. Just stop using it. Just con everyone. <laughs> I I maintain that if is uh, is go to with uh, sheep's clothing. <laughs> so it's it's every bit as evil as anything else. Stop stop using if. Now I also program in pattern matching languages, or I yeah. I prefer programming those. So it's easy for me to stop using <laughs> if. <laughs> I don't know how hard it would be to do, never use if or con in closure. Obviously, you could just cheat and just always use con, but if you want to say that one, it's the same situation. I kind of like con, though, because um, you can kind of uh, enumerate all your situations very carefully, yeah. especially if you use something like econ. So if what you, is econ? Is an econ uh, exception if none of these conditions match? Oh, so if you forgot the else. Which is nice. I mean, because you don't want you. You probably ought to uh, make it very clear, not just have a generic fall through else, but make it very clear what your yeah what all your situations are. Yeah, if that's enclosure, that would save me a lot of time. Because uh, American mm, it is else. Holy crap, oh, I don't know if it is. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, functions. There you go. Section nine four. We'll probably maybe get here. There. No. We'll get uh, here. Plus. So there is some math. So here's the, uh, yeah, the <laughs> fullest nice. notation for functions. All you really need. <laughs> um, I guess the notion of functions, so the math concept, functions yeah. as arguments. Yeah. So the useful of math is illustrated by formulas for the partial derivative with respect to x of expressions involving sums and products of other variables. X expressions that we shall differentiate are formed as follows. An atomic symbol is allowed, is allowed x expression if E1 to E sub n are allowed expressions, plus E sub 1 to E sub n and times E sub 1 to E sub n are also represent sum and product respectively. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is where they were doing that basic calculus. Uh, so in the from the very beginning, they were thinking in terms of um, non-binary functions, thinking in terms of lots, lots of arguments. Of and then I guess the times x plus a y y is the I guess algebraic notation for so I guess no, converting that's... algebraic notation to oh okay yeah. notation and then <laughs> obviously the uh, yeah the m oh, expression uh, sorry <laughs> I'm I, not and quite I love their indentation that's just sort of like <laughs> just smash it all and yeah. wrap it here but I like how they went to the effort of like well hanging it up on the <laughs> yeah. Um, search. What was search? To search a list for an element that is that has the property p. If such an element is found, f of that element is taken. If there's no such element, the function u of no argument is computed. So is that pretty much 
modern day filter. Uh, search a list for an element that has that property. If it's found, f of that element is taken. There is the function u of no argument is computed. So found and unfound. No. No, this is like this is a find. A find. So it's only gonna... you can do something interesting. You can do a map. It's like a find with a map yeah. in it, where the f is the f is the map. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. I can't remember what that's called in that's a thing. So I think that's the thing in Kamala's too. Still, everything before this. What do you mean? Map and apply. Well, the map things got map. There's something like like my map car and. Um, There's just like a shortcut. Map. Uh, map append. I don't remember. Or, uh, yeah, I, I think I know what you're saying, but I, uh, so the one that flattens so it or something. And do something to the one that passed the filter. I thought there was a yeah. shortcut function for that, as opposed to just doing the filter and then doing the. That, but that looks like it's just looking for one element. I mean, I didn't look at the definition closely, oh, okay. but based on the description, it looked like it was just searching for one element. And if it finds weird. it, then it would execute this thing on that one element. That's weird. I don't know what you want to do it on just one. Well, maybe your default. You're just trying to find the first one, yeah. The, yeah. The. Okay. So before, so pages one through twenty-two were, I guess, underlying description about the language itself. So S expressions, M expressions, basic foundations. I think this is allowed the primer part of the, uh, I guess, the programmer's primer part of the the documentation. So. Are there crazy directives? Yeah. Definition of function, function defines. Program. Punch the following. Yeah, Always definitely. going back to the M expressions, back into the S expressions. Yeah. And wonderful indenting, of course. <laughs> and then, wow. So then now they started mentioning that the, uh, the commas are optional. I can't highlight here. But you really should do them. Because <laughs> it's so pretty to read. Much. And then, I guess, T be written. What was T supposed to be again? Uh, T is, is that true? Is that just true? I thought that was interesting. They said uh, the commas are maybe omitted, and uh, this is an accident. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. We're going to fix it, we swear. Yeah, I think T was true and F was false. Okay. Right. Oh, F? F is false. Not and null? Is true, I think. Well, the predicates, it says here number three, predicates null. Uh, or the, these fill up these questions are going to call it. That's or. That's or, or and that's and, in. And, all right. And then this is negation. Yep. Or built in. You write null X or and and not. The dot notation is not allowed in list one. Hmm. Other functions may involve functions or function definitions may involve other functions which are either built in or defined earlier or later. So, basic premises, use of functions, a function, the list of arguments, and then a property list. Yeah, because it was keeping you, the property list was basically the global state in effect. Remember, right? Oh, so environment. Yeah. Cool. So you can pass it in and do stuff. So on its own, so this is this is really a kind of a pure functional kind yeah. of feel. Like on its own, every expression, every individual S expression was executed in its own environment. Basically, I think that's right, yeah. That's pretty Sounds neat. Like, but the functions were like I don't think you had to pass in functions. Like functions were there. And some other definitions were there. Like there's stuff that was basically if it was hardware implementations, it just was there. Oh. So here. But your average code, yeah, you just function. You have to be explicit. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have any sort of def var or def parameter or anything like that. No. Just, so function. So what would the arguments. advantage what would the advantage to that be over just having two lists input to a normal function thing. Like, you know what I mean? That's sort of what's happening, right? You're taking in a list of arguments and a second list of arguments in that, that point. 
I think. No. I mean, this is pre lambda. This is pre or lambda. No, lambda's there. Pre let or lambda, right? Lambda's lambda there. Lambda's in here. That's how they define the functions. What if anybody's implemented this recently in something new that we can actually play with? <laughs> That'd be cool. Hmm. You could Thank implement you. this in Lisp. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the easiest choice, yeah. I think on a bicycle. Uh, it's a debugging debugging tool, the pseudo function track list. You put a card, track list, after the cards was defined the functions f1 through f sub n. Before the functions are used in computations, the computer will print out the arguments and values of f sub 1 to f sub n each time they are used for trace computation. This is trace. Yeah. Yeah. And nice. the cards. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It's usually not necessary to trace more than one or, or two functions. Now we've done an yeah, infinite number of them, apparently, or a good large chunk of them. Which is usually true in debugging today. It's usually you know down to what, like, it's either this function or that, or one deeper, usually. Mm -hmm. Or maybe three. I really have no idea what it's going on. It's occasion. Just pass in all your functions. Check list star. So it's the Wang algorithm for propositional calculus. I don't remember this part. Uh, as an extended example, the use of succession of function definitions to define an algorithm, you give a list formulation of an algorithm for deciding whether a formula is theor a theorem of a propositional calculus proposition by a Wang. If you're just completely unacquainted with propositional calculus, we probably should probably skip this example. So I guess it's probably the hot thing of the time, I guess. Uh, go through oh, this. Oh, I'm good. Let's pass through. <laughs> a lot of Greek. I haven't seen that in a long time. List program, truth or falsy. Sequence is represented by X expressions, arrow. Function, arguments. I guess they didn't mention the, uh, Association list? Mm. I'm not sure it's on the A list or anything, is it? Here it is, represented by function, arguments. Is this the association list then? Look in particular the arrow. So they're they're using implies, they're they're calling implies an arrow. And they got it cut. Where, where are you saying uh, association list? They're just they're just showing prepositional uh, Oh the yeah, list. okay. Never mind. So, so here. not here at all. And <clears throat> theorem, I guess we're still in here. We should probably just keep on going. <laughs> More details of the Wang algorithm. Uh, list program is X expression. Blah blah. Remember the days when everything was capitals? Capitals, and no indentation. Yeah. Really glad they figured out the community agreed on. I like how these end style. these end uh, parentheses just happen to be the three on their own line. I wonder what the reason behind that was. It made sense to somebody. Yeah. Makes it a lot more readable, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> uh, oh, debugging. Uh, okay. And I think we're at the end. A slip function theorem in itself suffices to apply the wilding algorithm to any trial proposition, proposition and determine whether or not the proposition is a tautology. So one thing I'm noticing, and this was this is from the first two parts, uh, so I'm probably making this very late uh, a notice, but it looks like they were trying to introduce um, set logic as well as uh, prepositional logic okay. type stuff in the original definition of, of the list. And give you the primitives for all that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is just with that. Were they trying to do with the Wang algorithm? Were were they basically exploring? Uh, I think it was like an illustration of yeah, the illustration. I don't know. Or not by unification. Unification. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if this was just an application that somebody was using this language for at this point, and they just happened to include it in the book so that as an example, or if this was meant to be part of the language. Yeah, it seems pretty typical and. Yeah. 
just about every Lisp uh, treatise or book where you see some description of logic programming or, or unification mm -hmm. type stuff. So. Perhaps. Not sure. Uh, so the next section, section four. Sections including the description of the main features of the list system, the various way of defining and evaluating symbolic expressions for functions that are given, and some discussion is added on the use of the numbers in lists. Program feature, which is somewhat Fortran-like feature, is explained. Finally, the list compiler is described. Mm, the program lies so. on prog in, basically. So the apply operator, again, in terms of practical operations, I guess. So three, func three arguments, S expression, F of the function, X is the list of arguments, and P is a list of pairs. Three variables. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, that's going good. on. <laughs> so here we go, the lambda. Oh, yeah. Example one. So. If only that was actually a key. I don't know. <laughs> that's a simple example. Consider the function lambda yz Hans, car, header applied to the list, A, B, C, D. So I guess here's where they are doing the F is the whole lambda That's expression. The here are the argument or the, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the arguments. And then what was P again? P was the, the, free the P list, list, the list of pairs. Yeah, it's basically the, it's the environment. environment. Key value pair. Yeah. So know that the plist must be included even though it is nil in the list. Yep. Then some care must be exercised in writing the list X and P correctly. For example, if you did that, since car is a function of one variable, the list must be written as A, parentheses A, B, whereas parentheses A, comma, A, uh, parentheses A, comma, B, parentheses is a single argument. Right, they're trying to combine two lists. Yep. It'd be correct, but I'm necessary to write that. Uh, two arguments. So I'm saying one argument, this is two arguments. And then next, the formats is possible to the apply after discuss further in section four three, so. This is describing all the different variations. So much syntax. Yeah. So here the lambda specified argument y is given by is given as a by the argument list x, free variable z is set by the p list to b. To b. So that's where we're actually using like the environment. <coughs> Interesting. Um, it's a cool way of calling it, free variable. Cool. Recursive function. All well, example involves a recursive function so that a label definition is required. So, substring, so label, substring lambda, x, so this whole big thing is the function. Inputs and nothing supplied as the environment. The note, the system for translating M expressions into S expressions given in chapter two would give rise to quote comma T in layer of T in the above S expression. It's simpler to be able to write T or F, so in list one, the latter usage is required. So quote T and quote F is replaced with just T and F respectively. So, birth of T and F. No, T mil. Most of them. All right. Good ones are that. <laughs> and then, like, is the scheme T and F still? Mm -hmm. like Pound T. Pound T, yeah. Pound T, yeah. Pound T, yeah. Pound yeah. Ash. Ash. <laughs> we imagine new whispers. Oh, yeah, it's hashtag T and hashtag F. I'll do the corp. There you go. Uh, so, oh, I guess chapter five will wait for the, how to actually run this itself. <laughs> That'll be interesting to see. Uh, 
definition of functions in Lisp. So connected to their names only through the lists of the form label. Cardinal system, there are two other ways a function can be defined. The first relates to the functions defined in the system by machine language subroutines. The subroutine is a function maybe already available as part of the Lisp system itself, in which case it appears among the functions given in section nine, or may even produce a Lisp compiler. In either case, the machine language subroutine defines a function. The association list for the name of the function contains the indicator subroutine, as subr, indicate the subroutine exists. Subr in terms points to a transfer instruction of the form EXL. Subroutine N, or does TXL denote? I didn't notice the last time that this was here, but this is the standard, like, cell diagram thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice it was that old. I didn't see it the first time. I don't know what TXL stands for. That's the same sort of. I'm feeling transfer something. Translate. Transfer. Transfer. Oh, transfer and load, maybe? Transfer search and flow. Yeah, so it seems like you would be handing off to your kernel. What's an L? Lisp? Language. I, like your, I liked your word load. Yeah, actually. the load is, that was good. It was inspired. Uh, so the relevant part of the association list has a structure, as you said, the canonical example. Uh, the other way that the function can be defined is by means of a Lisp S expression, representing an N of M expression. Interpreted during the running of the Lisp program, in this case, indicator EXP is on the association list. The name of the function, extra points to extra expression defining the function as follows. So, again, inner console diagram. Uh, function may be already available in the list system itself, in which case it appears among the functions given in section nine, it may be defined by the users using the defined function. Wasn't this like the thing that people were not liking about Lisp back in the day was like all the predefined functions that had to get loaded before you to do something that was taking a bunch of memory? Uh, I don't know. No, because you don't, it's basically you just don't load anything you don't. That was pretty standard though, right? You would only load the stuff you care about. Yeah, no. yeah I wanted function X, okay, I'll load X. So like, why are you going to carry around all those cards there? That's true. Um, I'm kind of uh, uh, defined as a pseudo function. They have they have this term pseudo function. function C section four point three. We ask that four point two. Oh, okay, that's coming up. So we get to learn yeah. about pseudo functions soon. So whose effect is to assign definition of the expression expression sort to functions. The atomic cell for the name of each expression to be defined is paired with an X, S expression defining that function. And a list of such pairs is then given as the argument for define. The by operator acting on the define of this argument creates for each function define. Expression structure shown above. Then I have an alt script type three, which gets translated down to here. Apply operator. Arguments are three expressions. The first one starts the list. The second indicates that the list is of one argument. The third starts the first pair. After applies a value of this triplet, the defined function will have the put the respective definitions labeled by expression on the association list. Comic symbols FF and Alt. Hmm. Uh, here we go. Section four point three. One way of classifying functions is to divide them into functions and pseudo function. If function as a list is evaluated for its each as evaluated for each for its value. Point, thank you. For its value as such, e.g. car a b c equals a as a pseudo function is used for its effect other than its value, e.g. define or compile. There is no difference in form, however, because however between functions and pseudo functions. So, so before I saw side effects versus the uh, expression evaluation. Expressions versus statements, sort of. <coughs> All right. <coughs> uh, 
So in this section, the classifying distinction will be made instead on the basis of the form of the functions. There are atomic functions and compound functions. If the f of the f x e triplet for the applied operator can be stated as an atomic symbol, the function is called atomic. All other legal forms for f are grouped under the heading of compound functions that are discussed below. Atomic function is not necessarily a simple or trivial function. It can be defined by a complicated subroutine or S expression occurring in its association list. My well, immediate inter interpretation is uh, like what scheme and closure do as a list one, where you can specify the function as a lambda or the thing you're going to call oh, as a lambda. lambda and, then and an atomic R. function is literally the symbol for whatever the function is. That's, that's how I interpreted that. It could be wrong. Let's <laughs> find out. I feel like there's a lot of context here that yeah. is really questionable. Yeah. Uh, atomic functions. When the apply operator evaluates a function with, which is atomic, that is represented by atomic symbol, it searches this association list of the atomic symbol for either summer or expressure. If either is found, the function description which it points to represented by a subroutine or an S expression X respectively is used to evaluate the atomic function of X, a list of arguments. Neither sub expression or expression is found on the association list for the function. P list is searched for the function's atomic symbol. If the expression paired with the symbol is used to evaluate the atomic function of X. I feel like that was pretty obvious. Uh, <laughs> cool. uh, compound function. If a function is compound, it's represented by an S expression whose first element may be. Lambda, label, or funk arc. There we go. We're treating the different types in detail. We will recall from chapter two. Fun arc. Remember fun arc? Anything still? Wait, let's see the number one really quick. So the same thing as function? No. Some different element is used here, or parentheses have been used incorrectly. The apply operator will usually fail. Okay, like I see usually. <laughs> it's like, yeah, every, except before that one time. Yeah. Uh, before we give types of detail, recall from chapter two that epsilon is the form of the variables x1 sub n, then sky. <laughs> we take into the function of n variables whose values to by the substituting the arguments for the variables x sub 1 to x sub n in that order, following the resulting expression. Talk about the label. Oh, funk arg has not been discussed previously. It was introduced for convenience in the writing. In writing the 704 system. Generally speaking, the use generally speaking, the use of func arg is internal to the system and need not concern the user. The purpose is to tie the correct P list of pairs to the function in which apply is operating. Following equivalence holds. So it's a funny form of apply. And On this part, what happens next? So now we're. So here's where we're actually let up. <laughs> well, it's uh, good to get the review because we don't have the first one as a video. Yeah, this is where we actually were. <laughs> oh, we caught up. We caught, we caught up. up. Oh, I thought we were seeing new things. It was new to you. Oh, okay. Thank it's you. all good. Now you're you're all. Yeah. I know. I know. We some lisp. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So let's go and pass this. Let's try a new section. Special forms. Yay, here we are. Here we this is my this favorite certain, section. <laughs> certain forms are classified under the special under the heading of special forms and evaluated differently from the usual case. The first element of S of the of an S expression is one of the special forms. The rest of the elements of the S expression are treated in special ways described below for the particular use cases. A special form is signaled by either F subr or F expressure in terms of subr or expressure on, on the association list. Note that special forms cannot be used for the atomic functions discussed above. So, That's quote. So I can't apply a quote. Uh, Maybe still true. Because you can't apply like macros. Right. I don't know if you can apply quote or not. Well, here, can't the next macros. thing is... Uh, well, the next thing we talk about is quotes. Yeah, I don't think you can apply. Memories. Yeah, that's you right, because they have to evaluate. Yeah. Which is irritating sometimes. So, special forms are quote, cond, and, or, prog. I believe all of that. 
So, quote a special form of the argument of one argument that prevents its argument from being evaluated. So that's still here. Con a special macro, form or macro ish. Ish. What? Sorry. Because it's forcing delayed execution. Quote that's you're saying what, is yeah, nice. oh, yeah, yeah. X, X doesn't happen. That's well, basically delayed execution, which is usually macro. I mean, isn't the theory macro. that the special forms are the real core and you should be able to drive every other thing um, from those? Maybe. But it, they work like macros, right? Where it's like delaying execution, changing order of execution, stuff like that. Or like Con. C operators where they're just yeah. built into the language. Yeah. Con is a special form, which is a conditional expression. So the, the part of the expression following con is an arbitrary pair of arguments, each of which is a pair. So I guess same as before, or same as modern day lisp, lisps. And is a special form test of all of its propositional expressions follow, following and in the list are true. Aim today. The value of and is supposed to be F or T. So, so it had shortcutting right from yes, the gate. The propositions are evaluated in sequence until one is found that is false or until the end of the re list is reached. And the yeah. or here has the same shortcutting feature. Yep. Same thing. Evaluated in sequence until one is found that is true or until the end of the list is reached. It's T or F or F or T. And prog. Uh, oh, I guess we get to prog in section four point five. The programming operator. Well, now it's like what prog n? No, that's prog. Prog is basically gives you go to. Mm, no, it gives you procedural programming. It gives you it gives you Fortran. Yeah. Go to right. It can be basically can go. You have, can do prog and then you can do say go somewhere and you. I think it's label. I've literally never used it in actual code. No, prog is like prog in and Sorry? prog one and so forth. I'm just thinking of prog in. I don't know if the other. I can't prog, prog one is the. Prog one gives you the first. First prog in and gives you the last. the last. Okay. But before in all those distinctions, there was prog. prog. Oh, okay. oh, wait. wait. So I guess we'll get through that in section 4.5. Yeah. Hey, we actually have numbers. Numbers. Oh, and here we but go. List, list two. two. We get to do we'll that. Be able to handle both integers. Not and allowed in list one. <laughs> list one anyway. yeah. list of integers are. Is there a list three? Yeah. There is. No, I don't think so. I'm not sure there was actually a list two. There's a list 1.5, which is we were thinking That's about right. going to that paper. I don't know if there's even a list two. Okay. So in this case. It is the definition, it is the, the version of Lisp definition versus the uh, evaluation or the, or the way symbols are stored. Right. The Lisp 1 versus the Lisp 2 thing. It's interesting like how in Lisp 1, they didn't allow integers, they just went straight to floating points. It was more of a pure symbolic like, thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so floating point numbers in list one can be added, multiplied, and raised to a power. Oh, wait, list one didn't have integers, but it had floats. Yes, only oh. floats, which is like the odd, like that's like, I guess, yeah, it just seems weird. It's all the way around. Do you care about accuracy? I guess they're just kind of competing against Fortran at the time. I guess Fortran was, when did Fortran come out? Like one year before. Okay, like so. Late, no, not even maybe a year. It is referenced in this. Yeah. Because uh, that's where the prog came okay. from. So I guess this is the sales part of the academic sale. <laughs> Gotta go voting point first. Three functions available: sum, product, and association. Sweet. All you really need. Association right? list for floating point numbers always contain <laughs> designation. Low for float. Low. Low. Also, the commercials, the flow. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Floating point numbers do not appear in the list of atomic symbols, but on a list of floating point numbers. These lists entry points to association lists for the numbers themselves. If the number is negative, the indicator minus is precedes the association list for the number. Each instruction of association lists for floating point numbers is described in section 6.2. Does this suggest that flow is, uh, oh no, I see quote here. 
I was going to say if the I was going to ask if this suggested that flow was a special form itself form. in order to represent the number properly. properly. I think they mean like the actual underlying representation of the numbers in the system, uh, because I guess you would care at that point. Be hard, like I mean. But here I see it quoted. Instead. Yeah, and I I really think that's cool how they're they're quoting the symbol. Yeah. Zero point six. Six. For example, the following question is correct. Quotes. X stands for a floating point number, which is, for example, X paired with X on the P list. So I guess here we're assigning X to 0 0.6. Uh, stands for a floating point number, which is, for example, paired with that. No, no, no. They're 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 saying. We're, we're here's 0 0.6 in a way to represent it as a literal. And the other is also you could have assigned a variable to a floating point number to X. And so here we're just taking a sum of where we are mixing how we're, how we do our uh, expressing of floating point numbers. Uh, so okay. X is assigned something they're saying. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so it's pre-assigned pre to something before. Okay. And in theory, it's in the environment, right. in the p-list. In the p-list, yeah. Okay. Uh, exact rules for punching floating point numbers for the list one read program are a decimal point must be included, but not as the first symbol. You can't have 0.6, you have 0 0.6. Uh, here we go, so six incorrect, correct, six point. Pretty uh, Pythonish. <laughs> Mm -hmm. A4C to put the floating points like that too, or Python 2 did. Uh, a plus sign or minus sign or may precede a number. The plus sign is not required. Exponent indication may be used. Powers of 10 proceed by a sign and must include one or two digits. Ah, uh, they didn't do the E thing. They yeah. just went straight to it. Numerical values must be less in absolute value than 2 to the 28th. And they had to convert over to 10 to... So how, the, how do you 10. represent it with an exponent? Would that be 4.21 space 10? No, no, the no, no, uh, no, plus... You put a plus ten. symbol. Yeah. Or minus. So, oh, okay. Yep. That's interesting. Significance is limited to eight decimal digits. Wow, they get that pretty would, far. I 128 like bit yeah. yeah. That would... I like that. That, that thing would throw people who aren't you know, lispers for such a loop. What's that? 4.2 plus 10, what's that equal? Well, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> uh, 4 point whatever, are we billion there? 4.2 billion? <laughs> is that? Yeah, that's clearly what most people who program with the 4.21 plus 10 should be. Uh, function link, which finds the number of elements in a list. Its definition in expression form is blah. So the use was it the how's the use of numbers in Lisp? Oh well, all right. So let's follow it since this is real small. So we have the length function, which is a lambda that takes in y, which is our list. Mm -hmm. So our first condition says is y null. If so, then return zero point zero as the length, right? Um, otherwise, true. Otherwise take the sum of the length of the rest of y, y. and add that to one. one. So you get the uh, recursive, recursive definition, definition for navigating through a list. Yes. And they did recursive definition of that. Yeah. Just thanks to label. Thanks to label. label. Hmm. Nice. Uh, Still can't do that in Python. No. <laughs> Recursion in Python? Uh, you can't have, well, let's see, you can't do a recursive lambda. I don't think you can. So no, yeah, you can't do that. You can <laughs> reference the function if it's a named function, I think. I'm not sure. You'd smash your stack at some point. Yeah. If you were bad at, yeah, because they don't like tail recursion. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, that's one of the things that like, Guido, I think, is angry about. He doesn't like, yeah. Thinks Lisp is uh, a little yeah. more. <laughs> um, program feature in Lisp allows sequence operations statements to be expressed in Lisp language. In Lisp language, 
The effect is rather like a Fortran program with list statements. Each statement may be formed to be evaluated, or an atomic symbol, or in a list beginning with go or return. Ooh, so we get the go to. Atomic symbols are wait, used. Wait, 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 wait. Let me. Yeah, can I reread that? that? Uh -huh. <clears throat> Sequence of two. The effect is rather that like each statement may be a form or an atomic symbol, or yeah. let's go or return. So it's okay. like a plugin where it does everything, but you can say things like. So you can do returns, mm -hmm. or you can go to some. Out right there. So and side effects, know, returns, or maybe. Like, I don't remember what they say. Is it how do they how do you put a label in? Is it label? Yeah, uh, like here. Is that right? There's label. Was it label? That was a label here. That was mentioned before, right? Yeah, but that's that label's that's a function. Label. Yeah. Uh, what was it for? I thought it was I label too. I'm literally never read. I think it was it. too. Actually, go to. But yeah. was it label versus labels? Maybe. Maybe I think it was labels or that was way back in section two, right? No, let rec. It's let rec that lets you do modern label. Yeah. Okay, that's definition. And then okay. right. Wait, the atomic symbols are used as location yeah. markers in the program. Yeah. Uh, or, wait, since we're doing this all online. Oh, okay, uh, there we go. Lisp, let, rec. Yeah, I think that's it. We might as well look up. Uh, uh theme. Yeah. So go common list hyperspec. Either way. Uh, I guess they're both about as close to this one as yeah. anything. Uh, broad. This guy? Yeah. So that's that let. But we want yeah. we want Prague. No. So go up. No, no, no. Up around the top. Going Prague. Like that. Yeah. Ooh. I think this is the one that's go to. Is it? Yeah. Oh, there it is. It's the tags. Prague. Oh, it's just a beer tag. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Oh my. And then you can return X. Examples. There's the loop rejoin error. Uh, and it has go. Go to rejoin. I did not go know. Go loop. <laughs> awesome. I guess was it go? Go instead of go to. Yeah. And I guess the back. Can we look up label? Sure. Uh, yeah, I think labels was. Like a let for functions. That's Shortcut. what I was feeling. You don't really need. If you remember. Oh no, maybe you do. No, you do, so that you could I refer to it. You can't do it in let. Yeah, I mean, it's closure should log. I forgot. Yeah. Closure was like, we don't care. We're not going to make that distinction. Yeah, we're let list. labels. Yeah, or F let. Uh, I was thinking F let at one point. Yeah, F let. There's, I think labels is the one where you can recursively reference. I think. And F let was you can make a function which you can't recursively. Yeah, or you have to do it in order. Or that defines locally named functions and execute a series of forms whose definition these definition bindings. The important thing is the second paragraph. The scope of the name binding encompasses only the body. In the body of a flat function names matching those defined by flat refer only to the name. Ah, I see. So it's like a and then if you look at labels, it says it's just like flat, except that the scope of the defined function names encompasses the function definitions themselves oh. as well as the body. Uh, so it's like Thus a, being just like label here for recursion. Gotcha. Interesting. So localized function. Neat. I did not know about that. Uh, when a list beginning with go is encountered, the rest of that list will be evaluated under the assumption that the value will be one of the location marker atomic symbols. And a search is made of the program for the symbol, and when it is found, the statements following the locating symbol are executed. Conditional expression, will allow, conditional expression to allow conditional branching may be used in a Go list. If a list beginning with return is encountered, the rest of the list is evaluated, and the resultant value is the final value of the entire program. So. Prog is crazy. Prog is amazing. This is, was Prog one of the special forms? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. They have to be. It's a lot of power. Wait, 
Echo. No, no, it wasn't. What? It's not. Or not the basic ones. Bottom one. Maybe it's just. Is that the last or, one? Or they don't have. Oh no, it is. You're right. Okay. All right. It's got to be. It's got very weird uh, mechanics. You could literally skip entire parts of the expressions, and never evaluate them. With the prog. Yeah, because you could go past to the next label and skip a bunch of things. So your special forms are to allow um, arbitrary evaluation of the internal symbols. Just like macros, but usually built in. Built in. Uh, let's see. Other statement forms appearing in a program are evaluated in sequence, but the resulting values are ignored. This implies that these forms are important mainly for their actions, just changing lists of various sorts rather than for their values. Well, here's one place where I kind of like the comma. You don't have to like hyphenate sequence of statements or underscore it or something. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That'd be okay reading in a sequence dash of dash statements. In this case, it'd be the same number of characters. The list L is a list of program variables which are handled in a manner similar to that for dummy variables, although the two types must be distinguished. Dummy variables. So the program variables are set equal to nil at each non recursive entrance to the program, but their values may be changed at any point whatsoever in the computation. For example, programs can occur within other higher level programs. In such cases, an inner program can change any program variable of the higher level program as well as its own program variables. Scoping. Scoping, yeah. Function variables for changing the program variables are set and set queue. The function set is a function of two variables, both of which are evaluated. Let's so set a program variable v equal to the value of an expression e E must be quoted in the S, S expression. Ah, uh, so it's not to evaluate it in V. Set quoted, set Q. Ah, uh, the original set Q definition. Set Q, on the other hand, treats its first arguments as if quoted and evaluates the second argument only. Thus, the S expression becomes blah. That's still in common lisp, right? Yeah. Set Q is, set and Q set is, is set not. Is it? Set is it's not. there, but is it's it? like they say, Shouldn't use it. Maybe I'm just remembering it wrong. Uh, what was uh -oh. it before? Because we got we got set F, which is the macro version of it. Set Q. Set otherwise. Q. And then. Do they have a also look for? Oh, there is a set. Set. Oh boy. Set symbol to value. So it is symbol. Oh wait, wait. Here it is. Yeah. And that's a short, the little tick is a shortcut for quote. Oh, well, right. That's actually what's happening under the eclipse because it's a pain in the butt to type that all the time. Yep. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've never used set. So that was there from the very, very beginning. Holy crap. <laughs> Why? Why? They probably wrote set and uh, like, this is irritating. They made set two after, after set. Isn't this the initial definition, though? Like, well, you know how things go. It's like basically they first wrote a little bit. I'm like, you know, set Q would be nice. <laughs> I can tell this quote go for another again. Hacky. <laughs> then why they would just keep it like kind of say like, well, oh, maybe it's a bad idea. We shouldn't take this out of the paper. Just not stick it in there. No, too late. <laughs> Probably had production code that needed it. Oh, here we go. Whoever wrote that wing algorithm thing for his original. There you go. Was that guy actually at wherever this was? That'd be hilarious. No, that was I think that was IBM Research. Let's take oh. a look. Uh, it was in the footnotes. Uh, there we go. MIT Computational Center. No, Memo 14 for the AI project from MIT. Comp uh -huh. So maybe not. I'm John McCarthy. There we go. It was probably baked in with some sets in some place, and they're like, you know what? We don't worry. We're going to we'll just leave it. And where were we? We were to here. And then 
Uh, so an example using the program, and the program is in form of a large list and spaced out below in the form of a sequential program with the location marking atomic symbols are set out to the left. Program variable is LT. The lambda wow. expression for this program is for the apply operator is this. This is their initial notion of indentation. So here's I, there's a couple things uh, struck me. One is Go sitting on its own on on one of these lines. Oh yeah. Here. I wonder if that was a typographical error because the go is clearly <laughs> an S expression everywhere else. Uh, let's count. And the returns. The uh, one, two. One, here. Two. Here. Yeah, the missing one, I think. Uh -huh. Here. Where does this match? Here? Oh, you start from above, though. Here, here. So you're just starting at step, because that should be a complete thing, a complete S expression, step, comma, an S expression, right? You've got open, open, close, close. No open, open, close, close. Yep, we're just yeah. missing it before go. <laughs> Sharp eye. <laughs> Kind of sticks out like a sore thumb there, <laughs> but I'm assuming their indentation there. They, they did something. They actually formatted it. <laughs> there you go. The I first part. Remember how <coughs> Bless you. I can't remember how Fortran looked. Uh, was numeric labels back then still, right? Yeah, and that, they, they had like formatting yeah. symbols. So this sort of makes sense too, because symbolic. In, in the Let's try 10.0, go to 20.0. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised like if basic. it would work. It probably would work. That was basic there that I think you're referencing. Yeah, but you didn't have to do the .0. I'm pretty sure that would not work. That might work in this thing. I'm going to be curious. I wonder if anybody's got this code. Still go 3.6? Yeah, because it. I think it might just be a symbol from that standpoint. Since the program feature will be used frequently in the manual to describe list functions, and since M expressions are easier to read than S oh, expressions, that's sad. <laughs> programs will usually be written down in M type notation. <laughs> program variables will be given in lowercase, but the atomic symbols used as location marking symbols will be retained in capital letters. The expression set Q becomes X equals Y. Of course it does. Using these rules and other obvious extensions of them, the above program is written as follows. The program for That's search. Yeah, that is a bit readable, though. The program variables LT, blah, blah. I wonder why they have such a weird L there. Just... Mm -hmm. So. I guess from here on out, no more S expressions. Oh, look, the Lisp compiler. It's a pseudo function. It has a side effect. What do you know? <laughs> it's available to the apply operator. The compiler is called in by the Lisp function comdef, where X is a list of the names of the functions to be compiled. Each function on the list will be compiled into binary machine program provided functions defined on its association list by indicator expression pointing to an S expression. The value comdef is a list of the names of the functions it was able to compile. The compiler proceeds in three stages. Generate generation of the list SAP. SAP in the sense of S S TXL was probably long. Because I see a TXI, which might be integer. Oh. Hmm. Wait, so generation of list S expressions, I guess, generation of binary programs, sub, sub R put in association list. The uh, list SAP is SAP in the list form. For example, blah. I guess it's the assembly, I guess, for the time. Mm -hmm. uh, 
This example is objects being the G are atomic symbols generated for use within the compiler. ESS comma zero in the last element above is used as it is in SAP to tag symbols. You need to have memory location assigned to them, but no actual space reserved for them, i.e. the usual location field SAP symbol. So, uh, yeah, this is a bunch of assembler that I don't quite understand. That's it is me. actually assembler. DXL is assembler for the 704 or whatever this thing is. Want to check? Let's check. Uh, TXL assembly. Okay, TXI reduced to one less than the maximum. Well, you probably IBM 704. Test. Which one should I look for? Here? IBM 704. You probably need that. IBM. I don't think anybody's writing assembly for it. It's on the phone. Uh, some guy, some deep in some cave in IBM is still working. <laughs> on the I don't see what chip this is for. And then what was it? It was 407, right? I have something called the 32K 709-7090 Fortran monitor. Yes, it was a 704. NASA data, data loading routine for the IBM 7094 and 7094-704X systems. March 1966. Wow. Sort of pretty, pretty nice for 1966. Yeah. NASA's got a lot more money to publish things that look like. It's NASA. We got cash back then in 65. Yeah, they were. Yeah, let's hire an entire publishing house. <laughs> and I found a Fortran, an ancient Fortran program. It doesn't put numbers everywhere. Oh, there we go. There's the TXL. But it used numbers as. Yeah, but that doesn't say what it means. Uh, yeah. It means something. Resulting machine level program. Yeah, this is this is pretty common in the old. So I have a. I found something that's uh, got a, got the original Fortran code, followed by the machine level stuff. Mm -hmm. It has all that kind of stuff in Slack it. Slack it over, then we can put it on the uh, big monitor. Will do. I've got a picture of. I'll just show it to you here. It's going to be on the recording. That's the 704. I used this in some slide deck, I guess, probably about three or four years ago. Oh, wow. So it's just still in a folder. Wait, so the lady sitting at the type teleprompt, I guess? She's probably punching the cards, it looks like. That's a card uh, Here we go. Oh, turn it. Can't do Firefox. I'm surprised he's getting away with wearing a suit instead of a lab coat. He must be the boss. <laughs> uh, no, 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 they're, they're posing for the picture, clearly. It's marketing. Yeah. yeah. Like, like you, sit here, look, what's the... What were you look, looking at? You're doing something. Yeah. <laughs> what were we looking at, anything in particular? Well, I mean, this, this is stuff. And I, I was just wondering if maybe... I have no idea how to read this. Yeah. I. Oh, so. well, STO store. So they're storing the previous thing in in whatever D represents, which might be a register. There's oh. they're storing in an address. Oh, uh -oh, here. Right? Got here. Yeah, and, and below. Yeah. Um, I see a subtraction up above. LXD, <coughs> I think, is loading a D word from a. <sighs> whatever that address is, into some register. I don't know. Oh. Uh, just trying to figure out what the TX is. LX D load data, LX load data name? TX? I don't know. Yeah, we have to pull the 704 thing. I thought I had the 704 thing. So 704 assembly, huh? Similar. 704. Definition TXL? Uh, IBM 704. Yeah, I, I think. Oh, hey, wait. What does TXL mean in computing? Computing? Here? Yeah, I have the feeling this is not going to help, but hey. You never know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Traffic exchange launcher text to Excel. Yeah, all this is wrong. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Give up. Give up. Yeah. Oh, wait. What is that? that? Cisco? Have my no, doubts. Similar IBM 704. Yeah, seriously. Transport? should look for 704. 704? Yeah. Okay. So, well, here it says a transport endpoint exit, le exit list. It's probably not it. Uh, similar definition. IBM. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Oh, seven ah seven oh four. Oh, coding for the computer PDF right below or introduction to macro language because those were originally called macros. Oh, they were. Oh, this is nineteen fifty seven. Well, because assembly is is a series of bits. Yeah. And. And that thing that we call assembly is just a bunch of macros to make it human readable. <laughs> All right. Yeah. See, so here we go. IBM, macro language. I go to any one of these? Macro definition. Oh, the how is defined. Okay. Back. Uh, I'm going forward. Macro definition. No, there's there's a nicer one up, this product up at the top. Nope. Oh yeah, good luck there. <laughs> yeah, step back one more page. Okay. Please. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, one more for you. Sure. <laughs> okay, go down. Uh, macro instruction. Let's go ahead a page. Uh, uh, macro library? Oh, I like that. Let's do that macro library. A library exit is supposed to blah, 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 blah. Let's go forward. Oh, this is terrible. More? Variables. <coughs> Even more. In our trailer. Ooh, wait, wait. PDF. Will this be? Oh, language reference. That's the OS, though. That's the. It's not the seven. That's, a, that's uh, the modern IBM things. That's the okay. That's a, if you want to buy an IBM mainframe now, you get one of those. We need programs of COBOL. IBM 7E94, right? 704? 7094. And then language, time sharing, blah, 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 blah. Project Mac. Professor Fano. Hmm. Hmm. It used to be called IBM Basic Assembly Language, or BAL, used on IBM Systems 360. At one point, you can try that. So, 7390, and it had the high level assembler H1000. Oh. Okay. Technical notes XL. Uh, to oh man, but I'm not seeing the same kind of assembly. I'm not sure this is it. Okay, let's go back to this. Yep. All right. I, a got, shot. I got paid to do a little bit of assembly, mostly C, a long time ago. How was it? Eh. <laughs> it was embedded. So, okay. So, like, you, you write a C. Oh. Every now and then it would be wrong, and you just switch to something like that. Wow. Kind of janky compiler. But it was airplane certified, so that's what we used. Interesting. I have never touched assembly ever, ever. <laughs> I only did like a few times in debugging and I always got help. Uh, so we actually knew. Yeah, so we actually went there to play. <laughs> I used it back when using it to optimize various things was in vogue. Uh-huh. I would mix it with Turbo Pascal. Oh wow! Inline do an inline assembler. 
was before uh, they decided not to allow inline assembler. <laughs> C's never made that choice. They never will. They actually did. C was the one that, that made that. But then they replaced it. Instead of having the convenient ASM later, they were like, oh, we'll, we'll give it back to you, but we'll give it back to you as underscore ASM. Underscore ASM. Right? When did this happen? I was a kid. Back in the Sea Wars. I was a kid day. playing around. Some version of uh, Turbo C, C and some later yeah, version. Maybe it's a, maybe I think they just chose, chose to remove it in one of the when we went from Turbo to Microsoft Visual C. Oh, so it might just be a Microsoft thing. Because I thought GCC let you do an ASM. Yeah. I don't think GCC done, ever prevented it. Other than, I, don't I agree. I think it was Microsoft that made that decision. And then they returned it with an underscore. Here we go. Programmer has a collection of functions which he wants to compile, and if some of the functions mm -hmm. use each other as subfunctions, a certain order of compilation should be followed. Function f uses function g as a subfunction, then g should be included in a comdef, which comes before the comdef involving f, except the following special case. If a closed circle of function usage occurs, so circular references. Circular, yeah. Which is still a problem. <laughs> then all the functions in the circle must be compiled in the same comdef. Oh. Thus, the functions listed in the given comdef should either be unrelated or related in the circular sense. Any other subfunctions on which they depend on should have been compiled by a previous comdef. Oh, this is to get rid of um, the requirement that you have to have defined a function for another function. Yeah. They're, they're doing multiple cycles. Cycles, all right. Let's do it all at once. Multipass. Uh, so, another pseudo function compile is available to the compile function not previously defined. Argument L of compile is a list of function definitions, each one of which must be of the form label name, lambda, variables, expression. That oh, was so the function car, ketter, kadar, kadar are available to the compiler, so it's possible to simply write. Kadar in Leo of, so they had this back in the day then. The old shortcuts. Shortcuts in defining a function. Looks like only 3D. Uh, if, a string, if a string of A's and D's of length greater than 3 is required, it's necessary to form the function of a composition. Alas, alack. Uh, the compiler will accept any function definition which is acceptable to the apply operator, except the program feature is different, for, is different insofar as the Go statement is concerned. Compiled version of prog, the argument of any go must be an atomic symbol, cannot be a conditional ex expression. That's kind of a shame you can only go 3D. People write a function CR, and you just give it like B A B A D D. <laughs> We're some of the most convoluted things in code ever. <laughs> so they allowed that from the start, huh? Yeah. Oh wait, here's the, the three. So this paragraph was the three deep. Sorry. Come on, get out of the way. Okay, let's try that. So we have car, cutter, 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 uh, to the composition of these things. But if it's greater than three, so you need to, again, go back to function composition. Uh, next question, I guess we can just move forward on this. Uh, the example of prog, the source given, the section must be revised for the compiler to do the following, blah, blah, blah. And the corresponding M expression. Uh, running the programs with the compiler of the function set Q must be used. Set is not acceptable. So I guess set Q takes more priority than set. That's weird. In when writing programs with the compiler. So it would be the basic yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah.
amplification of the compiler system is underway. In particular, a feature will be included to permit a user to write SAP type programs defining functions. Such programs will present a SAP type programs. I know an SAP that that's probably not the one that they are doing. <laughs> well, I don't know it. I'm aware of it, but I bet that's not what they mean. No, not the not the big German company. Uh, did we cross SAP beforehand? I don't know. Like we saw SAP, how we yeah, can search, search. It's just pictures. Uh, Lisp, nine, six, oh, SAP. Ooh, does this go? Is this one? Which one? Let's find out. Come on. Download. That would be awesome if it was. Uh, let's AP. Make it's searchable. So, uh, what happened? Are you going to search SAP? Download the whole thing yet. Download. Okay, TXI means transfer with XR incremented. I found the original IBM oh. operator oh, list. I will put it in there. Oh, I want to increment my XR. What is that XR? So it's a register. Paste it over for the uh, video log. I shall. Sorry, I couldn't let that one go. No, that's okay. I could have. <laughs> <laughs> like, it means something in assembly. Yeah. At least see it. the power yeah. of having more than one person read. Turns out the 704 is the same as the 709X or 7090. Right. What's the difference? More power, more expensive, awesome. Branding. Branding. I don't know. And I'm not going to answer that. That's a research question I don't care about. I just <laughs> wanted to find the definition of some of those assembly language terms that we're seeing here. So here we go. Uh, you searched for TXL. Make it oh, TXI or LXD or whatever, or just TXI. scroll or just scroll down near around page uh, the 39, if it's page 39 or 40. 40th PDF page. All right. Is that right? Yeah. Go to the, the 41st PDF page. But this this uh, document also describes how to punch the holes and everything. Wow. Okay, this is 31. It's another permission to build one. Yeah, you're you're there. There it is. There's your there's your brief manual. <laughs> All you need this page. Listing of operation codes. Alphabetical listing. So T X. Is it? T yeah, TXI is one of the ones we found. We also saw there LXD and stuff like that. Transfer with XR incremented. Oh, I just remembered. Yeah, so. It's like pushing onto a stack, right? Yeah. The uh -huh. assembler that I've actually used the most is the fake one that Duth, or Duth, how do you say that? And in his book, There to Computer Programming, everything's an assembler. Some weird assembler that he made up. But I think there, yeah, there was a program where you could run it, like a fake machine for it. Oh, wow. That's the one I've actually used the most. Wow. I just looked through those books a long time ago. LX. I was trying about them. I've never actually gone through them. <laughs> LXD stands for load index from decrement. Aha. So. It's, it's a definitely a hard book to go through. Like, you occasionally have, like, well, I just have the random question. That's HM50, which means. If you figure this out, congratulations, you can do your math. math. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Didn't you just make a new, brand new, publish a new edition, new volume? Yeah, there's like a 4A. I haven't read. I had the first second of it. And what's the fourth one about then? Like, I remember there was one that was like sorting, another one was about like graphs. Yeah. And I can't remember. And when I, when I went through it, there's just the first three. Three. 
You probably won't. At the rate he's going, you won't make it. <laughs> we're supposed to have like six or seven or something. Like, still, he's still at it, though. That's still impressive. Um, two examples of compiled. So I guess you never found out. It's in here somewhere. The SAP Lisp, whatever that definition was. Apparently, we can't. Can't do a search for. Ah, uh, here we go. Ah, uh, Lisp SAP is SAP in list form. For example. Oh, it's the assembler. Something assembly programming. It's the assembler code in S expressions. Okay. Well, Lisp SAP is. So the list app program for each function compiled is printed out. After the compiler is created, the list app program for a function, the binary program is generated from the list app in two passes. The first pass, all symbols associated with BSS comma zero are assigned to locations of memory. The second pass, instructions are assembled into memory. And any unassigned symbols found during the second pass are assigned to locations of memory following the generated instructions. Wow. When the binary program has been generated, the compiler puts out the function association list indicator sub R pointing to the TXL to the binary program. Ah, uh, 54 on the new searchable one. And this is that also here on page 54 of the non searchable one? Yes, it is. I have to download the new one. How's the new one look on here? It looks different. I think it's retyped or something. It looks a little different. A little bit, yeah. Which one do you find easier to read? Uh, uh look back and forth. This one? This one. These look the same. Stay with the searchable one then. Yeah. And I guess we are back on page 57. I wonder how they made it searchable. What was their What was their call that was basically the the, the kernel call? It wasn't sub R, but it was one of those terms. Oh, uh, expr. Exp. I could think that was it. Oh, well, not important. You can do more of this. Um, so compile functions memless. Function memless is a predicate whose value is true if x is a member of the list y, false otherwise. x can be atomic symbol or a list. So, member of the list. And then we go down to the details of the binary assembly code. Interesting. Subroutine for equal expresses two arguments in the AC and MQ to come back either zero or one, true or false. Yeah. So the resulting LISP LISP SAP program is listed below exactly as the compiler gives it on the output sheet, except for the explanatory comments to the right of the instructions. So here's the assembler code to think of that Wow. I feel like people are more hardcore back in the day than today. <laughs> well, we've we've got so many layers of abstraction to us in order to handle things like virtual memory and all the other yeah layers that are shifting around. No. They got to they got to play with the stuff very directly. Directly, yeah. We've lost that. I mean, unless you like writing device drivers and you can get it back, right back into it or but, kernel yeah. the stuff, you get right back into this yes, joy. Right. That'd be fun. I don't know. This all just seems like goggle deep for me. Like literally. Yeah, like, I guess my my knowledge of assembly is. This is the the nothing. beauty though is this is it. I mean I mean this isn't yeah. what I'm used to as as x86 or whatever. Right, right. But this is like the. This is the truth. <laughs> no matter what you think your program is doing. I Wait, don't so care how does so okay so like that's the truth. Assembly to then binary. Where does that translate? So like really SXD. Here at the top is yeah. getting translated to some. Oh yeah, and it's got the two parameters, but, right? Yeah. And there's a there's a specification uh, you'll probably find in that manual that I posted. Yeah. But it 
SXD itself, okay, I'll speak from x86. Sure, sure. So depending on the types of the values on the right, you know, the, the sizes or whatever, mm -hmm. the same macro or operator could be one of several uh, assembly calls. Like, oh, if I'm, if I'm referring to a memory address, then I have to use this variation of whatever it is. Or if I'm referring to a register, then I use this other variation, whatever it is. So uh, you get a different uh, actual hex code or assembly or a oh, so get series of bits representing that operator. And they may even be of different So uh, it's like sizes. here, it just gets translated from this straight to a hex code. Yeah. And then the variables are shoved straight into that lo locations. You, uh, yeah, it's just a series of numbers or a bunch of bits. I see. So it's a C is translating. So like, say oh a C gosh. program. C is, C is a high level language. High level language that's translating into assembly, which in turn is a translating itself into the binary. Well, the thing that you're calling assembly is actually a reverse engineering of the binary. Oh. C is going straight down to the binary. I see. So. Or well, the compiler is. The compi yeah, the compiler is taking, it's taking the high level source code. Converting it to converting it straight into. Parameters. You're getting like the, the elf executable. That takes it a step further, though. Yeah, you, it's because the opcodes, that, that just goes in the text section or a code section mm -hmm. somewhere in that elf executable, potentially in multiple pages, depending. You have memory sections and other stuff. So the elf is like a packaging of the code plus a bunch of other meta information. Okay. And uh, storage. Uh, so. Yeah, so this level of computer architecture is still not quite there with me yet. <laughs> like I know, like the general gist of like a high level compiler is doing that for me, but yeah, what exactly the magic black magic is is not. It would be real educational to look up that. like the Elf standard, and uh, you know, the the thing I would do is take a C program, very simple main function, nothing Hello. clever. Yeah. Uh, no, add add some numbers together, okay. and that's it. And compile it. I, Hello World's more complicated. It's it's calling us. It's making a system oh. call. It's making a, a call over to the kernel, and and stuffing a bunch of stuff sitting in memory, a string of stuff sitting. In, yeah, dude, just add some numbers together and see how that compiles. Or open up SBCL and do a sum and do uh, declare fix num and and all that kind of thing. Yeah, and optimization yeah. and do disassemble it, but that doesn't give you the the code, the the binary code. It doesn't give you the elf. So yeah, I, I would do the C program and see what happens with that. It, it, there's a lot happening for you. Yeah, in yeah. Compiler like your main function is a start function, or rather, there's a start function that in turn calls your main function, mm -hmm. but the start function sets some stuff up. It, it's very educational. Sure. No, I can imagine. Yeah. You should totally, totally do look that. at that, yeah. L format and compile stuff yourself and use XXD or whatever. Use your favorite. And then the hex editor, editor and or dump hex look or through dump it. in or whatever. So how much of this rest of the paper is assembly? Uh, so yeah, this is, this is all assembly so far. When you're explaining it, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know. in great detail. <laughs> but yeah, like we are now much, much higher up the stack nowadays. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. This was, this is kernel level. What you're seeing, by the way, this is straight up doing it. Yeah. Because in modern things, you'll actually have um, the kernels helping interpret that series for you. Right. And there's there's certain interrupts that are known to go to uh, a registered section that the kernel is watching in order to or receiving in order to call functions in there. So you're not really seeing all the code. You're seeing this, which is then calling into this lower level that's doing its thing. Ah. But this is and now this I is think bare bones. No, it's, I think we're actually done with the assembler. Um, yep. so so this is actually, probably actually a good place to break, because we're at movie length now. We're like an okay. hour and a half. Mm. So. This is actually like for the <laughs> section five is actually like the average user. Like so, yeah, section five looks like we're back to. I don't uh -huh. want to do assembler. 
question. I think the special form section was my favorite. <laughs> got the four, got the five. And I guess those are just the the most basic. Then in section six, they talk about the other special forms. Mm, okay. Looking forward to that. You guys want to break it? We could. Uh, oh, really? do, 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 I have no idea how this works. Sorry. Uh, I. Well, Stop. <laughs>